Before we get started, the first thing that you're probably going to notice is that there's already quite a lot of code here. This is simply because I've made quite a lot of them now, and I've noticed that quite a lot of the code is very similar. And so all of this stuff here is basically just your core of any Sailor or Automaton. When I press run, it just shows the generation and the FPS. I'm also able to pan about um, and zoom in and out, that sort of thing. So, you know, it's all the basic stuff that I probably would end up adding anyway. But one function that I left empty is the update function, because this is different for every single Sailor Automaton. So, um, well, let's get into this. Today I'm going to be creating a cellular automaton known as Langston Zan. So let's get into the rules of this cellular automaton, which are actually very simple. So the world is made out of a grid of squares, with each square either being off or on. Also, one of these squares of the world contains an ant. In each step of the simulation, the ant will move forwards one square, and then the square that it was just in will flip to either off or on, depending on what it was before. The ant will then look at the colour of the square that it's currently in and turn depending on this colour. For example, if the cell was turned off, then the ant will turn right. And if the cell was turned on, then the ant will turn left. And that's as simple as it is, and eventually it creates some pretty cool looking patterns. So let's get into this. So because I already had quite a lot of the code already, I could jump straight into making the simulation. To start off with, I created the class to represent the ant. The ant simply has a 2D position in the world and a few variables to represent the direction that it's currently facing and a few functions to like move it and turn it and things like that. So now that the ant was created, I can now implement the rules and the actual simulation itself. This involves using the update function, which I mentioned earlier in the video. So in this function, I create a switch statement, and in this switch statement, I look at the cell that the ant is currently inside, whether it's on or off. And then, depending on what cell it's currently in, it just does the rules, as mentioned earlier in the video. The lovely thing about Langston's ant is that it's actually really easy to make run quite fast. With other cellular automatons, you typically have to cycle through every single cell of the world, but with Langston's ant, you just have to look at where the ant is, which is a lot more efficient. So anyways, here is how it looks, and as you can see, it's already creating quite an interesting looking pattern. But having one ant was a little boring, so I wanted to make it so it could support n number of ants, so it would look a lot more interesting. So rather than just having a single ant object, I made it so I had an std vector of ant objects, so I could have a dynamic number of them. So to start off, I pushed 500 ants into a list, and I just gave them a random x and y position in the world. And then I just simply iterate through all the ants and update them. And well, here is how it looks. I mean, yeah, it looks a lot better, but I still think there's a little bit more room for improvement. So in addition to having lots of ants, I also decided to give them a random colour as well. This means that when an ant flips a cell on, rather than the cell turning black, it will turn into a, a certain colour depending on what colour the ant is. If a different ant comes across a different colour, then it will just turn the cell off, as it did before when they were all black. So let's go see how this looks. And here it is! As you can see, all the ants have different colours, and it looks, well, pretty interesting in my opinion. So anyways, I'd like to take a moment to thank my Patreon supporters. Thank you, Snappier Soap 318, Stanley Morris, Synthetic AKA Hayden, Timothy Gibbons, and Alchemic. So, anyways, as per usual, the download link as well as the source code are in the description below. Once again, thank you for watching, enjoy the rest of this time lapse, and goodbye!